Okay, so my presentation is about databases. <clears throat> <laughs> And first, uh, let me show you this picture and let me ask you, what is this? It looks like a transportation system of some city. Which city it is? Database. Yeah, it is a database city about relational database, databases. It is a history of relational databases and there are a lot of them. And actually this picture is incomplete. Where is ClickHouse on this picture? It ends in 2010. It should be extended. Let me also show you this list. We should think not only about relational databases, but about databases in general, about database management technologies. And there are a lot of different kinds of databases, different species of databases, like relational document databases, key value databases, semi-structured databases, in-memory data grids, anyone does anyone know what it is? No? Okay. Like yeah. Ignite. Exactly. A single person in this room actually knows what it is. Uh, but the question to you, what did I forget? What did I forget? On the list? Yeah. What is missing? <laughs> There is no SQL in the list. There is also new SQL. And all other kinds of SQL, but... Uh, you arrays, you have arrays. Matrix. Yeah. You have vectors. Um, image. Raster data, scientific databases. <laughs> Deductive databases. Uh, well. Yeah, temporal databases. Okay, let's take a look more closely. So. Let's take a look at, at a single example, GPU databases. There are also a lot of them. There is a database named MapD that was then renamed to OmniSci and then renamed to Heavy AI. <coughs> and none of these renames helped them. <laughs> uh, there is a database named BlazingDB that was renamed to Blazing SQL for I don't know for what reason, it also did not help. But what is common for all these databases? Fail. Yeah, exactly. Kinetic is they... still alive. What? Kinetic is still alive. Yeah, Kinetic is still alive. Uh, MapD is also alive. But the reason is actually they are all suck. <laughs> <laughs> so let's... <laughs> Let's try to, I have, <laughs> I have to provide some arguments actually. So uh, in theory, GPU databases can run certain analytical queries faster. Queries with uh, large sorting, large aggregations, large joins maybe, they can do faster some complex uh, calculations like conversion between different uh, coordinate systems for geospatial processing. But in practice, they have to specialize the code for certain operations and only a small set, subset of operations is actually accelerated. Uh, they don't scale well past the size of GPU RAM, like 16 gigabytes, maybe 80 gigabytes if you pay a a ton of money for your GPU. And the code is uh, quite difficult to maintain. And the result is, it looks as follows. So here is uh, two examples of uh, GPU databases that are still alive. Heavy AI and Kinetica. And you can see a lot of, here is a benchmark, open source uh, click bench. And you can see a lot of black uh, entries with this school and bones. And these are not the cases when they are slower. These are the cases when they cannot process some queries at all. So they either crash, they are the, either show some exception and refuse to process the query, but they are basically non-functional for this pretty basic benchmark. And ClickBench is really 
quite basic. Uh, but in theory, they could provide some benefits in very narrow cases when the amount of computations is significantly large uh, compared to the amount of processed data. Okay. Maybe they are actually good at uh, providing some visualizations. Like here is a picture from the website of Heavy AI. Name it AI and natural language. Yeah, on any website of a modern database, there is AI today. Uh, to query one billion flight records. So I told Maybe I can just uh, make something as impressive using my favorite database. And my favorite database is ClickHouse. <laughs> so I implemented a, a website allowing you to explore not one billion records, but 100 billion records in real time in the browser. Let me open this link. I hope it works. Yes, it works. And it is interactive, and what it does? It is a single page application in the browser. It has a SQL query, parameterized query to ClickHouse. It is sent to ClickHouse. For every tile, uh, the result set is returned and visualized in these pictures. And what is on the picture? Do you recognize what it is? Let me zoom in. Amsterdam. Amsterdam's Amsterdam. Hall Airport. Uh, I can even take a look uh, and change to another query that filters by different airlines. And I can zoom in even closer, even closer, and see, for example, where are all KLM airlines are located. Or I can look at helicopters and see where helicopters fly. And you can see, for example, here is uh, VUMC. Yeah, so it works. Okay, let me go back to my presentation. <laughs> uh, I hope this use case is exhausted. Okay, what about another use case? Uh, web API databases. Do you recognize this database? This database, what it is? Uh, CPAL. Exactly. I thought someone will say DuckDB, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it has quite a strange logo. It looks like a lot of birds that have no idea where to fly. <laughs> so let me, let me read the description. SQL at the edge. Provide data for your dashboards and visualization just by executing SQL straight from user's browser. But isn't it exactly what I showed you on the previous slide, it is. But let's take a look. So there are more examples of these kind of things. Uh, for example, for Postgres, there is a Postgres uh, that is a web server uh, providing an API for Postgres, quite easy. Or Superbase as a software as a service, they also provide uh, API to querying uh, Postgres directly from JavaScript. And uh, they make sense. They have to solve some problems like authentication, access control, rate limiting, quotas, load balancing, resource isolation, input-output formats uh, for pr uh, presentation, for processing, query caching, etc. But the question is, why should not it be the part of the database itself, the database server? A good database, if it is not DuckDB, is <laughs> already a server. It already provides authentication, access control rate, supposedly rate limiting, caching. So there should be nothing wrong making a database server also a web server. And my favorite database <laughs> does it. It provides HTTP, HTTPS API out of the box, so you can query it from the browser, from JavaScript, using this uh, fetch uh, function with uh, query 
as simple as this. Okay, another use case. Time series databases. There is a huge number of time series databases. InfluxDB, Timescale DB, TD Engine, even RRD tool. It is not really a database, it is kind of a DuckDB for time series, but don't worry. Uh, OpenTSDB, QuestDB, uh, Prometheus with a lot of backends for Prometheus. First of all, my question, what is common about all these databases? <laughs> Let me just not answer this question. <laughs> Let me ask another question, which time series database is better? Which is faster, which is more convenient to use? Uh, and there is one problem. When you actually test, whatever benchmark you will take, it will be surprising that the winner is my favorite database. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ingestion rate, ClickHouse is on the top, clients, uh, CPU usage, memory usage, uh, again ingestion rate, query latency, and I would not say that ClickHouse is a time series database. ClickHouse is a relational analytical database. And some people even say that ClickHouse is a time series database, but it could probably just an implication because it works good at time series. Uh, and another interesting observation is that uh, new versions like modern time series databases like InfluxDB 3.0, they have three different versions of InfluxDB. Uh, all of them, all three versions are used in production. Uh, the latest version is not open source, but it is based on uh, Apache Arrow and data fusion and uh, merge tree compaction. So it is very close. At least it uses the same principles as analytical databases. And the same for QuestDB. At least time series databases converge to the same fundamentals. Okay, yet another example, semi-structured databases, like MongoDB. When I say... <laughs> when I say MongoDB, I want to wash my hands. Uh, MongoDB, RethinkDB, CouchDB, uh, they are for uh, documents, updating these documents. There are also query engines and databases for analytics on semi-structured data like Particle, uh, if I recall correctly, it is from Amazon, uh, like a query language uh, for easy querying of a massive amount of JSON data. But let's take a look. There are some arguments. Why should we have separate semi-structured databases if SQL standard has a SQL JSON. If Postgres has a JSONB data type for exactly this purpose. There are even implementations of MongoDB API on top of Postgres, like FerretDB. And my favorite database also has a JSON data type. And let me show it to you how it works. So, there is a popular social network uh, named Blue Sky. I don't use social networks. My database does. <laughs> you can find ClickHouse on Blue Sky. And this social network is entirely open. You can subscribe to the uh, stream of all events, to, to the Firehose. And here I will uh, show you how to uh, plug this fire hose directly into ClickHouse. So I create a table and the table, it is as, as easy literally as uh, here. There are only two columns, time and uh, data with the type JSON. And inserting into this table in real time, streaming insertion is also just a single line. Uh, this is a shell script, a pipeline of two commands reading from the socket, and inserting into ClickHouse. 
you can run it exactly as uh, here and it, it works. Alexei, if you make your system too fast, go, go back to the previous slide, yeah. then you will get a primary key violation. Uh, <laughs> let me clarify. Uh, you know, uh, my favorite database is actually better than your favorite database <laughs> because it does not support primary key constraint. <laughs> primary key is just a sorting. Uh, sorting key, not a constraint. Uh, that's, that's, so it will work. That's an inconsistency. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, how the data looks like? It looks like uh, some JSON with uh, deep nesting, some Japanese stuff inside. I don't know why. And uh, even more Japanese stuff, some emojis. And I don't even want to look what the structure is. I will load it into a JSON column. And I can query this JSON column without even using SQL JSON with a simple dot notation like this. For example, we can do analytics and see that the most popular event on blue sky is like. The second most popular is following. And only then there will be posts. Or we can analyze the languages, and English will be the first, Japanese the second, uh, Spanish the third one, and Dutch will be only tenth, because the Netherlands is just too small. But, <laughs> but still, okay, uh, the bottom line, analytics on semi-structured data can be as fast and as convenient as for structured data. Assuming you use my favorite database. <laughs> and probably uh, the last one, vector databases. There are a lot of vector databases. Quadrant, VV8, Pinecone, Milus, Vespa, Chroma. What is common between <laughs> all of these databases? Okay, <laughs> let's keep it aside. What is the most popular vector database? Uh, to answer this question, I have uh, put some data into ClickHouse and run a query to analyze the popularity by mentions on various uh, social networks. And I found that while it is not quite clear, most likely the most popular vector database is PG vector. That is just Postgres. Just a model for Postgres, and Postgres is not a vector database, so why do we need all of these vector databases? Okay. Uh, you can use ClickHouse for everything or almost everything. And what I want to underscore is that solid foundations are more important than fine specialization for a narrow scenario. Yes, you can get uh, a few percent, maybe 10 percent, whatever, on some narrow scenarios specializing for it. And it is okay, it is good for research, but take a look at my favorite database, ClickHouse. <laughs> it is an open source analytical database management system with 15 years of development, proven by production and leading the industry. It is on GitHub, if you did not look yet, I strongly advise to take a look, try, and use it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.